Hi there, boys and girls. Happy Thursday. We are on lesson seven today of our unit nine um, for listening and learning and skills. Um, today for listening and learning, I really want you to be focusing on summarizing facts about Spanish missions that we're going to be talking about today. Um, today's story is called Spanish Settlements. So you'll be hearing all about the missions that they're going to be taking. And as you get into the skills part of today's um, work, you're going to be talking, or more or less, you're going to be doing some writing today for your skills. And you're going to be practicing again what it's like to be writing an opinion. Okay, opinion writing, what you think about something, your opinion. Let's take a look at our vocabulary words. We've got five of them today. Established, started something that became known and accepted. Esting extinguish, to cause the end of something to put out a fire. Investment, money used to earn more money. Mainland, a large area of land, not including islands, that makes up the main part of a country or region. And missions, community set up to convert groups of people from one religion to another. Okay. Go ahead into our reader. Chapter 7, Spanish Settlements. The expeditions of De Soto and Coronado showed that the age of the conquistadors was ending. Both men had hoped to find fabulous riches and outdo the achievements of Cortez and Pizarro. Both the expeditions of De Soto and Coronado ended unsuccessfully. Both found little gold. De Soto didn't even make it home. So if you take a look at this illustration, you have DeSoto here on the left, and this is what Coronado looked like here on the right. Coronado did, but he came home beaten down and demoralized because he lost the large investment he made in the expedition to find wealth. The Spaniards decided that there was no gold to be found in the parts of the North American mainland of DeSoto and Coronado had explored. They began to focus their attention on the colonies they had already established farther south in the Caribbean, Mexico, and South America. However, they did not forget about the rest of North America entirely. They established a few forts to protect their colonies and ships, and they sent some missionaries to convert the Native Americans to Christianity. In the 1560s, the French had begun exploring the eastern coast of Florida. They set up a fort named Fort Caroline. Some men from the fort became pirates, they started attacking Spanish ships sailing in the Caribbean. The Spanish decided to build their own fort along the coast of Florida to protect their ships and to keep the French from competing in that part of North America. They sent a man named Pedro Menendez to Aviles to set up the fort. He arrived in August of 1565 and found a safe harbor where a river flowed into the Atlantic Ocean to build the fort and named it St. Augustine after a Christian saint. Soon after, the Spanish attacked and captured the French fort, Fort Caroline, and renamed it Saint San Mateo. St. Augustine, Florida, was established in 1565, 20 years before the English settlement on Roanoke Island, and 42 years before the settlement at Jamestown. There have been people living there ever since. In fact, St. Augustine is the oldest continuously inhabited European settlement in the continental United States. The Spanish also sent missionaries who worked to convert the native people to Christianity. The missionaries set up communities called missions. Here's the founding of St. Augustine. Pedro Menendez, the first Spanish colonial governor of Florida, was an important influence in having missionaries brought to North America. Menendez insisted that any ships coming from Spain must include a priest who could serve as a missionary. The Spanish set up a number of missions in the 1570s in Florida and on the islands off the coast of what is today the state of Georgia. Spanish missions were also established in Mexico, near the border of what we now know as the United States. In the 1590s, the Spanish began establishing missions in what is known as the Southwest, including states we now call New Mexico, Arizona, and Texas. Let's take a quick peek at this first illustration. This is Spanish missionary. Down in here. And down here we can see the Spanish mission. Okay. 
In the 1700s, the Spanish built many missions along the Pacific coast of California. The Spanish did this not only to convert the natives to Christianity, but also to develop allies among the converted people in North America. Many American cities in the Southwest began as missions named after Christian saints. Some examples include San Diego, San Francisco, San Jose, and Santa Barbara in California, and San Antonio in Texas. Every mission centered around a church. Missionaries would often live in one building, and the converted Native Americans would live within the mission in their own houses. Most missions also included farms and orchards. Some natives were also taught crafts such as carpentry, woodworking, weaving, soap making, and candle making. They also raised cattle, sheep, and other animals. Most missions also had bakeries, craft shops, and storerooms for the crops grown on the farms and orchards. In the missions, the native peoples attended a school where they received instruction from priests who included religious teachings. They were taught about Christianity and the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Adults and other siblings would also work in the mission's farms or orchards, while young children were taught to read, write, and speak in Spanish, not their native language. See, this is a photo, an old Spanish mission building. So I notice I said a photo, not an illustration. This is a real life picture. Some missionaries and conquistadors shared some similarities, but also had differences. Most missionaries were not trying to conquer people using force. Some were, however, trying to change the natives' ways of life and promote Christianity and European ways of living. That meant some missionaries were trying to distinguish the natives' tra traditional religion, culture, and language because they believed that it would be more helpful to them. Similar to conquistadors, some of the missionaries made enslaved the natives and forced them to work on the farms. Many local native populations also suffered the same fate as those who had first encountered Columbus. They became infected and died of diseases to which many of the Spanish had become immune. Some Native Americans accepted Christianity and lived in the local missions. Many others did not like being forced to adopt the new European way of life and the Christian religion. They wanted to keep their language, their religion, and their traditional ways of life. Eventually, some Native people rebelled against the missions in their areas. In 1680, a Native American from the Tua Pueblo tribe named Pope successfully led a rebellion that evicted the Spanish from their pueblos. Once they regained control, the tribe restored their own religion, culture, and traditions. It was only temporary, however, because about a decade after Pope's death, the Spanish returned and reconquered the land. When the United States expanded to the south and west, it took over Spanish territory in Florida and the southwest. Most of the Spanish missions were abandoned when Spanish lands came under control of the government of the United States, but a few of them still operate today, and many can still be visited. If you live in the Southwest or can travel there, you can visit a historic mission yourself. Photo of a mission today. All right, boys and girls, get right into your work today. If you have any questions, get on Zoom with Miss Naylor or I or Miss Barclay or Miss... Barnes or Mrs. Tracy, any of us today, okay? Have a great Thursday.